and the way that people thought about motorcycling back then was was so amazing it was like this photo here it's just the way that people are looking you know the smile on this woman's face and i traded a motorcycle for these Tom's most prized possession is a 1920 Indian Scout, once owned by Frank Richardson Pierce, a journalist and early motorcycle explorer. This is the actual seat that Frank Richardson Pierce sat on through all those miles, and the memories are, even though the paint looks rusty and rough, the memories are all just right on the surface of where it went, with all the dents and the bumps and the dings in it. And when people shine things up and restore them, they've just covered over those memories and the bike, is, its soul is lost. But Tom wouldn't think of riding this historic bike to Sturgis. Instead, he'll rely shocks. on his trusty 48 Indian. Here. I don't want to get stuck on the road and hold the guys up and hold the whole crew up. You know, want to make it all the way and back, no sweat. Back in Seattle, it's 5 a.m., and Jeff is almost ready. Tom's on his way to meet him. Medicineville Pass. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think of that one thing that, that I forgot. Tom, have you forgot what you forgot? I forgot the oil. I only brought two quarts. Well, we have uh, three quarts there. We can toss them in there. What's the temperature there? Ah, uh, temperature is, uh, what we got? 50, 50, 54 and a half. Hill's funeral home. My DOT approved helmet. <laughs> They're leaving early, hoping to catch sight of Mount Rainier at sunrise. Washington State has a helmet law, but riders on antique bikes are allowed to wear these old leather helmets. Body the spirit of the, of the pioneers, the old American West, the cowboy. We keep that spirit alive, even though our horses are made out of iron. Yes, she's putting on a show today, isn't she? Oh man, that's the most beautiful thing on the planet. Unbelievable. They actually rode motorcycles up there in 1909. Well, yeah, you can only get in there on horses, motorcycle, or walking. They didn't allow cars in there. No, they, they didn't allow cars. It. They had horse-drawn wagons yeah. and motorcycles. That's, That's right. all they allowed into this park. We all like mosey. We don't really. We're not seeing in how fast our bikes can go. If it were going someplace that were the kick, then we try to get there as fast as we can. Biking is a loose fraternity. It's not unusual to join with other bikers along the way. Uh, the old engines are a, a symphony of sounds. Each one has a different, uh, oh, the band. It's, it's like a band almost. You can hear the click, click of the tappets. And each one has its own signature and sound to it. nice to know a little bit about the area you're traveling through when you you read and study the history of an area you have a whole different appreciation the windmill is gone yeah. that fell over this winter these roads are not pretty un, uh, utilized underutilized which is why we like them bypass by the interstates and the freeways that's why we like traveling on them it's a real part of America and a little bit of history along the way the ghosts that exist here the spirits 
Then there's a guy like Jeff, he could fix that windmill, yep. get it going. I probably <laughs>